Hi everyone, it's Christina here at the Castaway Kitchen. I'm a few minutes early. We're going to be baking some keto cookies, uh, but I wanted to let the live run a few minutes um, to give people a chance to show up before I get baking. Um, oh, I wanted to say another reason I'm doing this is because Lily's, look how pretty this bowl is, you know Lily's chocolate, they make the Stevia Sweden chocolate. They sent me an awesome huge box of chocolate for the holidays and this awesome baking bowl so I wanted to put it to good use. This cookie recipe is a one bowl recipe which is pretty awesome so it'll be super rad um, to make it live for you guys and show you guys these cookies. There is a nut free version in my cookbook but I'm going to be making the version from the blog which uses almond meal. Let me get my apron on and we'll get cooking. I'll tell you guys about all the ingredients. So they're really simple. One of the things I love about this recipe is that it only uses one egg, which is nice, and it does work with a flax egg if you want to use a flax egg. It's a really flexible recipe. I'm going to be a bad example today and actually do a few modifications because I didn't have enough fat. So <clears throat> I'll talk you through it as I go. I'm going to move the camera down so you can see my workspace and right there, right? So, this recipe starts simple enough. You crack one large egg into a bowl, and we're gonna whisk it. And when you're whisking, like, very little fluid in the bowl, I like to do this tilting action to create some depth. And we're just gonna whisk it here until it gets a little frothy. And then we're gonna add in the vanilla, the fat, and the sweetener. So whisk, 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 whisk. You just wanted to get it like that nice foamy, thick. Now, I didn't have any butter, ghee, or coconut oil, mostly because we're going out of town tomorrow. So I did have some bacon fat though this morning that I had left over from the bacon I made Jack for breakfast. So the recipe calls for three tablespoons of fat. I have two tablespoons of bacon fat, which I'm going to use. And then I'm going to use some olive oil and hope that they still turn out because olive oil is not is a mono uh, unsaturated fat, so it's not liquid at room temperature. However, because I have some bacon fat, it should be okay. So, three tablespoons of fat. I'm going to do some vanilla. And I'm using powdered uh, Swerve, which doesn't have the same cooling aftertaste as other erythritol. I also highly recommend the Lakanto Golden or the, one of those monk food sweeteners that they taste really good. I feel like if you use just regular erythritol for this, I don't know, lately more and more I'm becoming more sensitive to the cooling taste that it has. And in general, just not... I think because I just eat so much dark chocolate by itself that in, like baked goods and stuff like that have like, it's almost like too sweet. Okay, so you see the mix gets like nice and thick and it's creamy. And then we're going to fold in the flour and it's two cups of coconut, uh, not coconut, sorry. This is almond flour, almond meal. And then I'm gonna do, this is a fourth teaspoon. So one, two, salt one two and i'm going to do some gelatin which makes them chewy a lot of people say they don't use the gelatin and it, they still turn out chewy i think it adds an extra chewiness to it but the cookie recipe as is does turn out pretty damn chewy so since all the dry stuff is just piled on top i like to do a little like whisking action before really getting in there i feel like it evens evenly mixes the dry ingredients in. So I'm gonna mix this up like this. Hold on. Once the mix gets pretty dry, it's like time to mix to a, to go from a whisk to a spatula. You see? And you've got this kind of dry dough going on, right? And then now we're gonna add in a third cup of milk. And I have Canned coconut milk, it's not the full fat kind. I've actually been using the lighter kind for like my coffee and stuff. Cause the full fat, it's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's not for like saving calories. It's just 
I don't know. I almost prefer it sometimes. It's not as like rich. So you can use almond milk. You can use whatever you have on hand. Actually, a really good tip if you don't if you're in a pinch and you don't have any nut milks or coconut milks at home, you can get like a tablespoon of cashew butter or almond butter or even coconut butter and mix it with some warm water like one tablespoon to eight ounces of water and voila you have nut milk so if you ever are like oh my gosh i don't have any like dairy-free milk in a pinch that's a good tip all right so as you see our dough's coming together now so we're folding in the milk and the dough's got a nice wet consistency but it's like you know it's not liquid because it's not a cake it's a dough great see look how good guys now we're gonna add in the chocolate chips and as I said, Lily sent me this huge box of chocolate. So I was like, oh, so we're gonna use Lily's chocolate chips. And the recipe in the, in the book and on the blog, I, I often prefer chopped up dark chocolate um, for cookies because it ends up giving them those big pools of melty chocolate. Chocolate chips don't usually result in those awesome pools of melty chocolate, but it's okay. So we're gonna fold them in. We got a really good chocolate to cookie ratio going on. <laughs> All right. So just making sure the chocolate chips are evenly distributed. Whoop. Okay, look at that. And now I have my baking sheet. Is I have this silicone mat. And I just got this on Amazon. It's not like a fancy, it's not the sill plat or whatever that, like the fancy name. All right, we gotta taste the dough, cause duh. So this is a really handy dandy little tool. If you want uniform cookies, I think it's a one ounce maybe. Um, you can get it on Amazon as well. And what I do is I scrape the bowl like that. See? And then you can make a little ball and put it down. And that's how you get these really uniform cookies, especially the little shape. I often people ask me like, how are your cookies that shape? And I'm like, well, I use a cookie scooper. And I, I actually learned this from my restaurant days. Cause you know, when you work in a restaurant and you're selling food and like to, you know, make profit and to know how much ingredients or how just you know when you're when you work in a restaurant the, the recipe has to turn out exactly the same every single time so the size of the cookie will also um, determine how fast it cooks and all that so the little scooper is important so it seems to me that the bacon fat Olive oil mix worked well enough for this. I don't recommend using only olive oil. I don't think, I think you have to have a saturated fat in there. Saturated fats in baked goods. You know, you can substitute like butter, ghee, coconut oil. Fats that are, that solidify at room temperature, those are saturated fats. It's an easy way to tell. And you can swap them out like easily. Um, in cooking one for one like they measure evenly so if you're ever in question that's why for a recipe if you ever find a recipe that uses butter and you can't do butter don't like freak out about making it dairy free just use tallow or coconut oil you know I mean there's a flavor to butter I find that is irreplaceable there are some decent dairy free butters but butter's delicious but for a long time, I couldn't eat butter. And I can only eat it now sometimes. I definitely do better with ghee. Because it's, while butter doesn't have as much lactose in it or casein, ghee, especially those from like really good brands, and some ghees even say it on the jar, like certified or tested, ghee and lactose free, which are the proteins in the, well, the lactose is the sugar, but um, in the milk that, uh, People are usually most allergic to. So, fun fact. All right, almost done here. Oh, that was a little big. Uh, I might need. I don't want to get them too close together. 
because the worst, because I use a little bit of olive oil, they might spread out a little bit more than they usually do. And I don't want my cookies getting stuck together. So I'll just bake the rest of that later. So another thing I always do is I use the palm of my hand and you just give them a gentle, ah, gentle little flatten. All right, so the oven is preheated to, uh, sorry, let me wash my hands. The oven's preheated to 350, and I'm gonna pop these in the oven really quick. Be right back. And I'm gonna set my oven Now I can read the questions. Hi, Norma. Yeah, you can make the balls and freeze them. So that you can freeze this dough, or even just actually in the recipe, I say to chill the dough first before baking it, because I think it makes the cookies like hold their shape better. So these might spread out more, but for the sake of the live, I didn't want to um, have to do that because then you guys be, would, would be for here forever and I want to show you guys the end result of the cookie because that's the thing about the lives oftentimes we make something but then you don't get to see how it turns out because um, you know you don't want to wait 45 minutes till something bakes but um, since it's just cookies it's just 10 minutes we can hang out if you don't want to hang out you can go and um, watch the playback and skip this part but I thought I'd take this opportunity to, um, sorry, to clean up. I'm like leaving tomorrow, so I have to make sure my kitchen's clean. Um, just to hang out and say hi. So I'm gonna be a little MIA in the next few days. Tomorrow I fly home to Miami, and I'm really excited about that. Um, but it's gonna be hectic. Family, my, there's gonna be nine people at my mom's house. Um, my sisters, my nieces, we're all gonna be together, so um, I'm just gonna be enjoying the moment and won't be online as much. I know the holidays aren't easy for everyone, especially if you feel, what's the word? I think that you have to be honest with yourself about like what your plan is for the holidays. If sticking to the way you're eating is important for your health, like autoimmunity or chronic illness, blood sugar regulation, then I urge you to um, just don't feel like you have to like white knuckle through it. Just make food that you, you know you can enjoy and if you're gonna feel your best um, Also be open with your family members, you know talk to them about it. You don't have to feel alone sometimes people tend to feel like they're um, Alone in their way of eating or that makes them feel you know Isolated during the holidays, but that doesn't have to be the case. Actually, Norma, you gave me a good idea. I am going to freeze the rest of the cookie dough. Haha, -ha. it's a good idea. So then, when we come back from from Miami, we have cookie dough balls in the freezer. So yeah, yeah, you can actually bake cookie dough from frozen. You're just gonna have to add some baking time to it, or you can thaw it in the fridge overnight. And then, um, and then just bake it. But yeah, so I do a lot of the cooking when I go to my mom's house. I mean, I love her cooking. She taught me how to cook, but I like to give her like a break, you know? Isn't that how it goes when you're, when you're young, you, your parents take care of you. I mean, my mom's not old by any means. She's only in her fifties, but she works so hard that I like to give her a break. So I'm going to make these balls and then put them in the freezer. What cookie dough when we get back? Being alone, well if you don't have family or friends to hang out with during the holidays, there are always, if you're, if you're not religious or super religious, churches have, and community centers usually have really good events. When we were in Hawaii, we um, 
we went to a Thanksgiving feast at a church and it was really nice. Um, and they didn't have a mass or anything. It was just the dinner, but, um, a lot of churches, I love cookie dough and no, the raw egg doesn't scare me. Um, have like, you know, community centers and stuff that stuff that you can do. So cookies are in the oven. I'm going to probably save this video and upload it to my YouTube channel. Hi YouTube. For those of you who watch it later. Um, cause I have an old, old recipe when I made these cookies, but, um, so I'm going to save the leftover cookie dough and they're separate. Cause if you like, if they touch each other, they'll stick together and I'm going to put these in the freezer. But this recipe is really easy. So it's a one bowl recipe. You whisk the egg until it's frothy and then you add in the sweetener and you can use maple sugar, Lakanto, Swerve. Um, you can use, I know paleo people who've used like honey and it works. You can use a flax egg to make them egg free. There's a nut free version in my cookbook. Although I don't know if I would do the coconut flour version with the flax egg. You know what I'm saying? Like nut free, dairy free cookie with coconut flour. Yes. Egg free, dairy free version with the nut flour. Yes. But I don't know because then the coconut flour version uses two eggs instead of one. Flax egg is one of those things that like it can only do so much. You know, it can like you can only replace eggs. I would say up to two eggs in a recipe. More than that, there's just some things that gelatin and flax eggs just they're not going to accomplish um and you're just going to waste ingredients trying um in aip baking they use viscous starches to do that so but obviously in keto baking with the lack of starches it's it's hard to pull off so yeah flax egg up to one egg i mean up to two eggs but preferably one in this recipe and that's written into the post. I think it was Goodies Against the Grain. She's another blogger, super cute. She's like 16. She made them egg free and sent me pictures and was like, oh my God, they came out so good. And I was like, awesome, thanks for letting me know. And then several people have made them egg free. Um, but like I said, the egg free version of these cookies definitely works better with the almond meal version. I always like to use, let me see, I think I threw it away, hold on. Let me see if I can show you the bag. So when I say blanched almond flour or blanched almond meal, this is, see blanched, that means that it's made from almonds that are peeled, like they don't have any skin, which is why the almond meal is white looking. If your almond flour has brown specks in it, that means it has the skin on it. And two of the reasons why I don't like that. One, it's going to give stuff a gritty texture. It's going to give them a darker color and often like the skin of anything really even vegetables it's going to be what like the most of the phytic acid is going to be it's going to be harder to digest so i always like the fine blanched almond meal if you use a lot of almond bake for baking well bees like bee like bzz, bee and they have a five pound bag on amazon and it's like a blue and yellow bag and it's like 30 bucks and it's really good quality i when i was doing a lot of keto baking when i first went keto not first, after my Keto Whole30, um, I bought it and I did a lot of, actually that's when I developed this recipe, um, was with that really good almond meal. I have since stopped buying it because I don't really bake with almonds that much. I just reintroduce almonds into my diet because I've had really good luck with some digestive enzymes I've been taking and other supplements to um, help my digestion and I'm seeing really good results. But... Um, for a while I wasn't eating almonds cause they would give me like instant headaches, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, good stuff. I'm, it's really, it's uh, it's very versatile. I would say that almond meal is much more forgiving than out than coconut flour. Um, coconut flour, you have to use very little. So the way you use coconut flour, and this is the interesting thing with keto baking cup for cup, coconut flour is a lot carbier than almond flour. However, in this recipe that I use two cups of almond flour, I would only use one third cup of coconut flour. So if you have a recipe that you want to make nut free and it take, it calls for a cup of almond meal and you're like, well, a cup of coconut flour is going to be like 
too carby or too starchy or whatever, you're not gonna use a whole cup of coconut flour because for every cup of coconut flour, I would say you use two to four tablespoons of, sorry, other way around. For every cup of almond flour, you use two to four tablespoons of coconut flour, maybe a third cup, maybe a third cup. It depends on the kind of recipe it is. <clears throat> you usually need to add extra eggs and extra liquid. So, which is like this recipe, the almond flour, the coconut flour version uses one third cup coconut flour, two eggs. Um, and it turns out really great, but it's just, Oh, you like the coconut flour version? That's awesome, Katie. I, I like the coconut flour version as well. My husband, which who I'm making these for because he's driving to Miami. So he left today and we'll see him there tomorrow. And I kind of feel bad that he's driving by. Well, he's not by himself. He's with Bruce, but I'm taking him to these cookies because he loves the almond flour version. Justin is not a huge fan of coconut flour baked goods. I think it really depends on your like preferences, you know, um, ooh, let's check on them. Hold on. All right, they look good, they're almost cooked. They need a few more minutes. I like them to get a nice little brown, like the little golden edge on the bottom. So even if your cookies, like the timer, that's 10 minutes, goes off. I always go by scent, even though my nose is stuffy right now, but if, um, and by that nice color on the base of your cookies. But yeah, so that's the thing with, and I, I talk about this on the blog and in my book a little bit. Coconut flour versus almond meal. Coconut flour is starchier or carbier, but you're gonna use a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot less, like so much less, cause it's so dense. And if you're like making pancake batter with um, coconut flour, for instance, with almond meal, you'd mix the eggs and the milk, and then you'd add the coconut flour, the almond meal, and you'd mix it till it was thick. With coconut flour, you're gonna mix the eggs and the milk, and then add a little bit of coconut flour, and you have to wait like 30 seconds because over time it gets even thicker. It's like a sponge. It like <sighs> absorbs all the liquid. Um, what else can we talk about? Any other baking tips for the holidays I can give you guys? Um, sweeteners, let's talk keto sweeteners. So if you're gonna use Lakanto, which they have like, they are, they, they market themselves as a monk fruit sweetener and they do use monk fruit, but it's a base of erythritol with monk fruit added. That one measures cup for cup. If you're using straight erythritol, like from Anthony's Bake, Anthony's Goods, I would say it's a, it's not as sweet, but you can still use it cup for cup. Swerve has a oligosaccharide added to it and erythritol, and that measures cup for cup. I think that the regular erythritol granulated and the regular Swerve end up having a, a strong cooling taste. I have to sneeze. Um, and it bothers some people, but you can do the powdered erythritol doesn't have the cooling aftertaste and i don't i don't find that the lakanto stuff has the has the aftertaste either and they have a golden one which is really nice um now a lot i get a lot of questions oh yeah also if you're looking at a recipe that's a keto recipe specifically on my blog but you want to use a paleo sweetener if you're using coconut palm sugar or maple sugar use it cup for cup i would say all these sweeteners all the granulated sweeteners work cup for cup like sugar lakanto erythritol just you know it might be a little bit off but it'll be within the like a good range um and then um what else um but if you want to use stevia that is a whole other thing um most stevia like i have like like this kind of stevia, the sweet drops, these are really great. I think they have a good flavor. I don't taste a strong aftertaste with this brand. I got it at Whole Foods and it is purified water, organic stevia leaf, leaf extract and the quijala extract. However, it doesn't really work in baked goods. Like it works better in like fat bombs or, um, maybe a mug cake like something small but to sweeten like something with various portions i don't like it so much excuse me you'll notice that in my baking let's check on the cookies um if i do use um if i do use stevia for baking i will use the glycerite the stevia glycerite is different um it's stevia in a base of glycerite and i use 
um, of vanilla flavoring because that's not in alcohol. It's in glis it's in vegetable glycerin, right? So I think that's what the stevia glycerite is essentially, and it's thicker. It looks syrupy like this, and it's a lot milder. Where most stevia, I would say, like use it in drops, like literally like droppers. The stevia glycerite, I usually use in like half teaspoons. I'm measuring it out, and I don't feel the aftertaste unless you use like a ton. And I know someone made my avocado brownies using stevia glycerite and said that they were decent. Like not super sweet, but pretty good. So I might mess around with that. Um, but in general, I don't recommend stevia in baking. I think it's, like I said, better for fat bombs. Um, I have never used the green, like straight up green stevia powder. I've never found it. Um, I'm sure you can get it some places, but if I can't find it at the store, I'm or like on Thrive, I'm like, eh, like it's not, I'm not into special, super specialty ingredients, right? Because if I can't find it, you can't find it. If you can't find it, what's the point of making a recipe with it? Okay, cookies smell ready. Let me get them out. let them cool obviously um because then you'll burn your fingers as my sister she would always eat them straight out of the the pan um someone asked about eggnog honestly i've never made eggnog i'm hispanic and we don't drink eggnog <laughs> we drink coquito which is like i think it's puerto rican but cubans drink it too and it's like evaporated milk and rum but i don't i don't drink that anymore I've never made eggnog, so I don't know how to make it. Sorry. Um, I, get, I know, I bet if you Google it though, someone's made eggnog, a keto eggnog. Oh my gosh, let me get a spatula so I can give you a close up of a cookie because they smell so good. So this recipe is um, on my blog, chewy chocolate chip keto cookies or keto chewy chocolate chip cookies. I came out with this recipe like two years ago. Um, I just republished the post on my blog because I updated some of the pictures. But man, this was like my first keto recipe I think that I posted over two years, like yeah, two years ago. And uh, my husband's favorite recipe still to date of mine. Um, I think my, my fudge brownies are good, but I actually prefer savory recipes, but that's just me. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me show you a cookie, hold on. If you're just tuning in, we covered, look at that. We covered um, a lot about keto baking. Like if you're gonna do coconut flour versus almond flour, the, the variations, we talked about the sweeteners. Ah, This recipe, it's a one bowl recipe, like 10 ingredients, they're super delicious. If you do like net carbs, they come out to like one or two net carbs per cookie. Total carbs because of the erythritol obviously is more. Oh, wow, they're hot, but I'm going to open it for you so you guys can look at this. Oh my goodness. Oh, look how good. Okay, I'm going to eat it. I haven't had this version, the almond flour version, in a long time because I've been doing the coconut flour version. Mmm. And the nut free version is in my cookbook, Made Whole. And the original version, the nut flour version, these are on my blog. So good. Mmm. I'm gonna take these to Miami. Because I'm flying home tomorrow to see my family. I hope you guys have a really amazing holiday. I hope that you have friends, family, or community. Even if you're if you have to go outside of your comfort zone and show up to a church group or a community center or you know there's a lot of groups online like um through uh group me what is it not group me what um meetup meetup.com even just like talk, go to your neighbor's house but i hope you guys have a really lovely holiday season enjoy tons of delicious yummy colorful real food and you know what 
some baking too because come on delicious low carb gluten-free dairy-free baking totally worth the indulgence yum all right merry christmas everybody happy hanukkah happy new year Mwah. see you soon bye